Hi, thank you very much. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. It's a real honor to be opening this very interesting conference. And I'm first of all going to apologize for my strong New York accent. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I've been training, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to riff a little bit off, uh, you know, the water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. Uh, one of the challenges I think we have is uh, there's tons of data, there's tons of measures. And so what I'm going to be talking a bit about today is how do we stop and think about what we're measuring and what kind of framework do we put in place and how do we build both the technical and the human capacity to work with data to make sense of serving our communities? And that's kind of what I've been working with the Kalpen Foundation and Evan uh, and many other um, entities I'll talk about briefly uh, today. So, so here's the issue. A lot of the data that we want to work with uh, deals with, with uh, human beings and deals with uh, businesses, and they're sensitive. Uh, if you want to under really understand how to serve a community, you need to understand what programs are serving what individuals and what businesses. And part of the challenge is, is uh, it's difficult to combine data across, um, across agencies. Uh, for very good reason, but this is a quote that David Elwood uh, likes to say. He, he um, uh, was very instrumental in, in one of the major Gates initiatives. And uh, you know, the challenge with bringing data together is the confidentiality protections. And he likes to quote this Baltimore commissioner who says, you know, when a child dies, uh, the commissioners all get together with thick paper files to figure out what happened, but the only time they do that is when the kid is dead, right? So it's very hard to figure out on a case-by-case -case basis after something's gone wrong uh, to figure out how to institute program that are going to work. So, so that's uh, analogous to a business saying, this is from HP, you know, if you think about your cities, your communities, uh, if HP only knew what HP knows, it would be more profitable. Well, if your city, if your community only knew what it knows, it could do its job better. So, so how do we think about getting that stuff together? And I've got that up there because I like looking at Brad Pritt, but uh, <laughs> also, you know, it's the same thing in sports. You know, let's get the data, let's figure out uh, how uh, and uh, a, a team that doesn't have enough resources, and I'm talking about city teams, community teams, uh, doesn't have enough resources, but they figure out how to use data to do things better, right? So, so that's kind of the story here. So what we're going to talk about is measures, measures everywhere, we've got to stop and think. So massive amounts of new types of data, and, and you know, you, you get people in your office all the time saying, we got this, we got this, we got great sources of new data. We've got the ability to combine data administrative records from the way in which the programs in your city and your state are administered. And now, of course, there's all the new types of data, not just collected by governments, but collected in the private sector, uh, cameras, sensors, community inputs. Um, as I opened up by telling you, I'm from New York. How many of you have ever been to New York? Okay. What do you think the biggest single complaint is? It's noise. Right? If you've ever been there, uh, there's noise all the time. It's difficult to sleep. It affects the quality of your life. It affects uh, many, many things. But the problem with noise is you can't measure it. How do you develop metrics of noise? Because something that's annoying to me is not annoying to my 24-year-old uh, kids, right? Um, so how do you get a standardized measure of noise and how do you know about the source and it's ephemeral, right? So it turns out these very clever engineers can develop sensors that can capture the information so you have actual metrics of the noise in the city and you know the source, you know whether it's a drill or a fire alarm or um, kids partying or whatever it is. Uh, those data, however, don't come in nice little Excel spreadsheets. 
They come in nasty, ugly files that you need to be able to figure out how to combine and use. And it's the same with camera data, it's the same with cell phone data. So you've got all these data together that could produce metrics and measures that would really help you serve the community. But what you want to do is you want to figure out how to, how to, um, how to do it, how to, how to work with it. So one issue is confidentiality, one issue is, uh, is complexity. Another issue, <clears throat> as we think about measures and metrics, is what are, we, what are we going to care about? You know, so you're going to pop up with a measure, but the kinds of things you want to ask are, how timely is it? How close is it to what we want to measure? So like in New York, um, they want to allocate resources based on 311 calls. Right? Suppose you want to do that. Well, what are we trying to measure? We're trying to measure a problem that's coming up. So how good are 311 calls at capturing that? Well, babies aren't making 311 calls. Old people might not be making 311 calls. Uh, illegal immigrants might not be making 311 calls. Uh, and maybe there's one person who's made, and you know who she is, making all the calls about the noise in New York City, right? So, so how close is the measure that you're getting to the core measure that you want to capture, which is the citizens in your community, right? What's the coverage, in other words? How detailed is it? Is it at the block level, or is it at the zip code, or at the neighborhood, or is it this weird measure which is a census tract which measures what census field interviewers can get to, but may not make any common sense from a real operational standpoint. You're always interested in uh, trends over time. So if I want to look at trends over time, I want to make sure that I'm comparing apples to apples. So if I'm measuring things, if I'm looking at flu trends, for example, I want to make sure it's the same thing that's being measured over time as well. And then since no measure, no metric is going to be perfect, how are we going to trade that off? OK. So it turns out that there's lots of interest in this. You're not alone. Um, if you think about the big businesses in the United States now, two decades ago it was GE, GM producing things. Now what are the big businesses? It's Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, <laughs> uh, and um, Apple. These are data-driven businesses. They're not producing things. They're figuring out how to use data and, and make value out of it. So the contrast between the private sector and the public sector's capacity to use data has not gone unnoticed. So there's a lot of momentum. The Gates Foundation, for example, this is uh, the uh, piece that uh, David Elwood and I and David Kendrick put together for um, the Gates Foundation thinking about how you can support people in communities to use data. At the federal level, the Commission on Evidence-Based Policy has uh, produced actually a very influential report that's working its way through the House and the Senate. Well, you know how things go at the federal level, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, and then I'm half-time at the White House working on this um, uh, project right now, leveraging data as a strategic asset for governments. And one of the things that certainly I'm really pushing, and I'd love to talk to you about it, will be uh, over at the booth over there uh, later on this morning, about how to combine community-driven, local demand-driven information and, and leverage the interests and the needs of the local, regional cities and communities uh, to knit together a national initiative rather than having it come top down. Does that make sense? So there's lots of momentum. So there are two pieces, I think, that are needed. Uh, one is a technical component. These data are complex, they're messy, they're confidential. One needs to have a secure environment within which you can access and use the data. And so largely to inform the Commission on Evidence-Based Policymaking, we've been working with the federal government to put that together, uh, again with the support of the Kalpin Foundation and other foundations. And then it doesn't do you any good at all to have lots of data if no one in your office can work with it. So if you've got metrics and no one knows how those metrics were generated, you don't know, your staff can't tell you 
why one of the indicators are flashing red, because they don't know how it's generated and they don't know what the cause was. So you have to build human capacity. You have to build uh, the, the ability of people in the agencies to work with, with the microdata. And so we've been working on that as well. We actually just finished a class here in Kansas City, uh, and we're running other programs as well. So what are the specifics? The basic idea here is there's a program called FedRAMP uh, for, at the federal government that uh, takes lots of time and lots of money, paid for by the federal government, uh, to put in a secure uh, remote access boundary and within which different cities and states can put their data and then share the data across agency lines or across state and city lines to approved people for approved data for approved projects. If, for example, Kansas City, Missouri wants to compare data with Kansas City, Kansas, instead of having to physically ship it from one city to another city, they still maintain control, they still maintain security, their own staff can work with other staff in the uh, other agency to develop measures and metrics and compare them uh, in, a, in, a, in a sandbox environment. The way in which we train people up to do that is uh, we work to uh, identify uh, data that cities and communities want to share and to work with uh, and link, train them up on uh, how to work with the data. So moving a step beyond Excel spreadsheets, right? Because Excel is a great tool, but uh, you want to be able to replicate and share the information. Python, it turns out, I know it sounds scary, but we've been training over 200 people to use it. It's called Python after Monty Python because it's fun. It's, it's relatively straightforward. We provide recipe books so they don't have to code from scratch. Everything's done and they tweak it. And then what you have is you have a recipe book that takes the data from soup to nuts, develops the metrics that come out the other end, and then you understand how when an when a indicator is flashing red, what the source was, because you can read back what the ingredients were that created the measures. So in other words, measures, measures everywhere, but this enables you to think. Does that make sense? And, and the thinking is building trained staff, building the new products, the new dashboards that have the indicators that make sense, building the networks so that if you can communicate with each other and that's how you develop the new measures. So uh, we, oh, in just a year and a half, we've worked with government agency staff. They don't have to be ACE programmers. They have to care about data. They have to care about policy. A few of them will learn, uh, will already know how to code. Uh, and it's been super successful and it's changed the way in which the, the, the communities are doing business. Um, it enables them to develop new measures that are driven from the community. So here's an example in Illinois. They wanted to know ex, what kind of jobs were ex-offenders getting and what was leading to their recidivism. So this isn't a top-down measure. This is a measure that was driven from the needs of the community. It costs a lot of money to house prisoners and it costs a lot of money when they recidivate. So how can we reduce that? So starting with the class, uh, people within the agencies got together, started to develop measures, they kicked the tires, they figured out what worked, what didn't, they developed the, the recipes and uh, developed metrics that enabled them to make sense of what was driving a lot of the recidivism. And it turned out some of it was silly stuff. It was technical violations, like you didn't call your parole officer. And that had an impact on people's employment potential. It cost the taxpayer because for silly violations, they were going back into jail, wrecking their jobs, wrecking their careers. And you could, that, that really has been informing policy in Illinois. Measures that were generated by the community, of the community, for the community, that from the people who understood at the coalface what the issues were. 
Here in Missouri for the Kaufman uh, class, for the Kansas City class, we brought together people from uh, many states and cities. We worked with Missouri data and Kansas City data, and we were able to develop dashboards where you could see where the high and way low, uh, low wage jobs were coming from and going to. You could compare employment dynamics across borders. Where are the workers coming from? Where are they going to and when? So, I'm recognizing I'm out of time. Just a reminder, here's the issue. We want to be able to use data to make decisions. So how are we going to do it? We have to think. We have to work together. Technical and human issues need to be addressed with. And then we get to do our jobs better and uh, win like the Oakland days used to. So I'll be over there to answer questions. Thank you very much.